Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Now today I'm going to be talking all about body image and confidence. Body image is something that I've struggled with for many years. The way that I dress and the way that I am, I, I've been told my whole life it's not that of a curvy girl. I don't know if that makes much sense, but it's what I've been told. A lot of times you will look on Instagram, even YouTube sometimes, and you usually see that girls that are my shape or size, they tend to dress a little bit more sexy. They'll do the bodycon dresses, you know, the two-piece, like the crop sweater sets are really in right now. And I'm a little bit more edgy, a little bit more androgynous at times. So to someone who's like super feminine, I think I can come across as kind of a tomboy. And that's fine with me because to an extent, I am kind of a tomboy. There are girly things about me. But my whole life, I've kind of struggled with femininity in a sense that I never felt like I was doing enough. And then as I got older, I kind of got used to it because I started to realize like, hey, you know, this is your style. You're evolving into who you are. When I was younger, I dressed a little bit differently like this and like that. And now that I'm older, I kind of don't like that stuff. So I just kind of stick to the way that I am now. I noticed that I am less approached by guys and... You'll find that as you get older and you become yourself, um, there are a lot of things that will change like that. I think that I wanted to just kind of give you my tips and my tricks on how I deal with these things because they're not that easy. I have my days where I'm confident about it and I have my days where I'm not. I'm gonna tell you what I do on the days when I'm not so confident. Learn to move on from negative comments. I know that this is the most difficult thing to do out of all of the things I'm probably going to say in this video, but you have to realize that negative comments, they don't define you, they define the other person actually. The fact that someone took the time out of their day to say something negative to you, it really just shows that they think negatively of themselves. So what people tend to call out in others is usually what they think about themselves, especially with guys. And I, it's called like taking a dig at you or taking a little nag at you. I'll find that if a guy says something negative, it usually means he's not very secure so he's taking that dig at you in the hopes of making you insecure so that you're easier to control that's really all that is I've had many times where guys have kind of taken digs at me the first time that it happened was in middle school and I was I've talked about this on my old channel so I'm not gonna say too much on it I'll probably link the video down below it's my first encounter with being fat shamed from someone else a negative comment was in middle school and I was presenting like a math project and the guy called me a fat bitch and I just like ran out of the school like screaming it was so bad the second time I encountered it was then again in high school I liked a boy and a friend of mine at the time had went up to him and told him and then he once called me a fat bitch again so that those were the two encounters when I was the youngest of when I encountered it it didn't end when I left high school I don't know why people kind of say like oh yeah life begins when you leave high school and all that's going to change and everybody's going to be so mature in college it's not always the case different people mature at different times especially people who haven't experienced things to kind of humble them and make them more kind i've noticed i've experienced guys saying things like oh you know you'd be nicer or you'd be more beautiful or prettier if you were 10 pounds lighter and i think that it's kind of a two-sided thing I think about this because at times I think that, you know, I own a mirror. I know when I'm heavier and when I'm lighter. And I feel like in a dating setting, just meeting me and making a comment like that, that's not coming from a positive place. You get what I'm saying? Like if that was coming from someone you were in a relationship with that's noticing you starting to put on weight and is taking some kind of concern, it's a little bit differently. And that person would approach that a little bit differently. So it's kind of very situational how that can be offensive because if I am getting a little too heavy I don't mind a close friend or family member saying hey you know you're kind of slipping away you know I've noticed you've been maybe binge eating or whatever if it's coming from a place of concern it's not offensive but in times where guys will say something like that I'm like okay you're taking a direct dig at me for some reason you think I'm too secure and you want me to be less secure so whenever that happens 
I take the negative comment and I try to look at the person for all that they are and realize why they're saying something that's negative. For example, a guy who doesn't completely maybe have his life together, he may take that opportunity to be a negative person because a negative person will never have a positive life. So they tend to speak negativity before positivity. It just makes them feel better because they're going through something. So realizing that someone is going through something, it actually helps you give empathy and empathize for that person because you realize, you know what? Whatever's making that person negative, I hope that they get through that. Turning it to that form of thinking has made it a lot easier for me to just move on past negative comments and just make it a positive. It, it's all up to you and how you want to approach it, but never approach it in a negative way because that's never good. Stop comparing. And I know that sounds, that may sound a little bit generic, but I mean it in a very specific way in this year, in this decade that we're living in. I mean stop comparing yourself to Instagram pictures, anything on social media, because me personally, before something goes to Instagram, I can be honest about it and say that it has gone through about two to four filters, Facetune, VSEO cam, Snapseed, like they go through so many different things. So we have learned as girls, we don't even appreciate a raw image anymore. Therefore, we don't appreciate everyday life looking how we, how we look. Stop comparing yourself because you're not comparing yourself to a real thing. I would go on other YouTubers or other bloggers and be like, why does this look like this? Why does this look like this? This looks so perfect. That looks so perfect. And I started to kind of look at it in more of an artistic way and appreciate it as art because that is all it is. It is not real life, it is art. And that's the only reason you're really meant to like it. You're not meant to compare yourself to it, to aspire to it, it's just art. You can take inspiration from it, but don't be so specific and expect yourself to look like something spot on because it's not realistic. If anything, use them as inspiration. Work towards things in a realistic way. Track your own goals, track yourself, and focus on being the best you and stop trying to be someone else. A lot of the fashion bloggers that I know and love are very slender. I love Danielle Bernstein of We Were What. I love Rumi Neely of Fashion Toast. They're very thin girls and I think that they're beautiful. I take inspiration from things like that but I know not to compare because we're two different people and two different body types. Something that can help you out when you start to compare yourself versus just appreciating something for what it is in the moment, being an outfit, a great hairstyle. When you start to compare Look at someone or find someone that kind of like looks like you or has something that you have that's excelling with that. Like for me, I love Ashley Graham. Just like going through her Instagram page gives me a little jolt of confidence. I look through the, you know, curves bloggers and, you know, things like that, like bloggers or curvy bloggers or things like that. And I find other girls that are, you know, wearing really cool outfits and really cool clothes and they're rocking it and sometimes it's humbling to see someone who's even more voluptuous voluptuous that you are or even more curvy being even more confident because you're like why am I even like making a big deal like there are so many bloggers that I love that I've just found over time and they're so curvy and they're so confident and they have everything that I have they have cellulite they have this they have this they have this and I'm like, well, why am I making such a big deal out of everything that I have if this person is having a full, great life and I'm choosing to not do anything because I'm insecure? It opens up your eyes to realizing that there are other things out there besides what you're seeing. Learn to appreciate your bare, naked body. As a girl, specifically, this is one of the best things that you can do for yourself. I have learned that just being naked and Loving the way that I look naked really helps me a lot. Instead of when you get ready in the morning, instead of just throwing on your clothes, doing things to avoid yourself and avoid your flaws, just take a moment, look at yourself spot on and choose to love them. And there's a TED Talks with Ashley Graham. She's a full figure, you know, curve model. Um, she's fully clothed in the video. She's not naked, obviously, but she just, has you know her body mantra her affirmation that she may tell herself to love herself and it's actually really good I'll link it down below learn to love your naked body 
it'll help you in relationships it'll help you in social situations like changing in the locker room at the gym that's something for me that was so so awkward I don't know why it was so awkward when you look super uncomfortable it shows but when you look super confident like kind of like you know in Mean Girls when Regina George realizes that like her they cut her um shirt and it's like purple and you can see her bra through it do you see how like she kind of was just like hmm, whatever and like it became cool whatever you have that's a flaw or a problem make it cool like but you have to learn to accept it and appreciating yourself naked helps with your daily mantra and your daily affirmations while you're naked just look at yourself and say i love myself i appreciate myself whatever it is that's a flaw choose to love it and move forward and that's a great way to start your day and the more you do it the more comfortable you get with it, I promise. Dress for your body. I cannot say this enough. I became the most happy in my body when I started to dress for my body. The biggest thing that's a struggle for me personally is my hip size. Like my waist is really small in comparison to my hips. And so is my upper body. I don't have a big bust, as you guys can see. I They're not the smallest boobs in the world, but they're not the biggest. I buy a lot of like tops and dresses and regular things from regular stores. But when it comes to jeans and like things that are not stretch or may fit a certain way, I may have to trickle into the plus size. I may have to trickle in. I may be the first size, but I still have to go there because sometimes I can't fit into a size 10. Sometimes I can't fit into a size 12. I may need a 14 and... I'm fine with that. I think for me, what brings me peace of mind is knowing that if something fits well, you're not gonna care about the size after a while, after you put it on and it's comfy and it's cozy, because you know what? There's nothing worse than having to spend every morning struggling to fit into your jeans. I feel like that is the worst feeling ever, and it makes you feel bad about yourself. And I don't know why, as girls, we choose to do that. Because if you really think about it, who is seeing inside of the tags? Who? No one. No one even cares. Don't let your perception of your body stop you from doing things that you want to do. I think that this is really easy to do and fall into this rut because you feel like, okay, I'll start doing this once I lose 10 pounds or 20 pounds or whatever your goal is, but like do it now. I find that being a curvy girl can stop me from doing certain things like I used to be a dancer and I feel like now sometimes because I'm not the thinnest that I've been in the past that I will stop myself from taking a dance class or I love to do pole dancing. I'll stop myself from going because I'm like eh. Instead of doing that just go. You know no, at the end of the day you'll feel so much better about yourself after you do things that make you uncomfortable with your current size. I don't think that it's fair to stop yourself from doing things that you love because you think that you're too fat. I think that that's body shaming in the worst way because you're ripping yourself of having a full and exciting life and I don't think you should do it. Like maybe you want, you've been wanting to take a ballet class your whole life and you've never done it. Um, or you want to take a pole dancing class or you want to do yoga. Open your eyes up and realize that there are so many women out there who are multiple sizes, colors, shapes, everything that are doing what you want to do. And I'm not even the curviest girl in the world, like I know that. And I feel like sometimes when I say certain things I feel bad because I feel like women who may be curvier or who may be, you know, actually really plus size and bigger sizes may look at me and be like, what are you complaining about? No matter what size you are, if you're body shaming yourself, it is serious because it can turn into worse things like body dysmorphic disorder and even eating disorders so I don't think that just because you aren't you know a size 20 or if you're a size 2 or if you're a size 16 or 14 it doesn't define how you should feel about yourself I feel like no matter what size you are you have a right to deal with your body image having a healthy body image no matter what your size is really important so if you ever feel like your size is stopping you from doing something that's something that you need to take a step back Think about it and do it and try your best to do it as soon as you can. Whatever it is that you want to do, just do it. And I promise you, once you just take that plunge and you do it, you'll feel so much better. When I was younger, um, I want to say maybe about 12, I put on maybe about, in a whole summer, I put on maybe about 50 pounds. I was just mad about a lot of things. To get totally personal, I didn't have my father in my life. I grew up in kind of like an unofficial adoptive setting. I was raised by my grandmother, who is not my biological grandmother. She's actually my 
grandfather's first wife and both of my grandparents are deceased. I started to feel uncomfortable about situations like that and I started to binge eat and not having my mom as close as I was before and things like that and feeling a sense of loneliness I turned to food. As I got older I had stopped dancing for about a year maybe a, a little over a year and I felt big I felt ugly and then I wanted to go back to dance but I held off for a while because I was like, you know what, they're going to make fun of me. I'm not going to be able to move the way I once did before. And for some reason, something in me as a young girl, I don't know what it was, made me just make that step, make that leap. And I was fortunate to have some great teachers, some great mentors along the way who really helped me focus more on my skill versus my weight. And I started to notice that the weight just started to peel off. I ended up like being some crazy measurement and my dance clothes didn't fit anymore. And I was like, whoa, all this happened because I wasn't thinking about it anymore. I was just dancing and doing what I loved and the weight will come off. When you start to love yourself and treat your body right, your body will look the way you want it to. Try your best to get to where you need to get to to follow your dreams and do what you love and you will feel so much happier. And I know that some of these tips that I've given and some of these to-dos are for some people everyday life and they may feel like, well, I already know this, but sometimes people forget and sometimes people don't remember just that it's important to care about and nurture yourself to having a healthy body image. I feel like sometimes that's something that's hard. I have to do it. Whenever I realize I'm doing it, I watch things that make me feel better. Nurture yourself, love yourself, stay happy, stay positive, and most importantly, stay at peace. And thank you guys so much for watching this video. And make sure if you have a friend who's going through maybe something with body image, make sure to share this with them or we would love to see the ways, the ways that you handle your body image and maintain a healthy one in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe. I make new videos every week. I love you guys. Bye. There's church bells now. Um, can't think of the word. <laughs> <laughs>